Hello, and welcome to this talk about Chef Club Tier Performance Testing. My name is Hari Krishna. I am a consultant and a coach. I have companies with Cloud Transformation, Extreme Programming, Agile, and Lean. I've spoken at multiple conferences. My interests include high performance application architectures and uh, distributed systems. So before we jump into the topic, let's understand the context. Why do we need to shift left in performance testing? Let's do a quick show of hands. In which environment do you identify most of your performance issues? It's not quite likely that you'll identify many on local machine and even possibly on development environments. Most teams I've worked with start identifying performance issues on staging uh, and then a lot more on their production replica. And those issues that we don't end up identifying our users identified for us and we need to fix them. Now the color coding here on this chart is uh, the more intense the red is, that's how long it takes to fix those issues. So this is not desirable, right? Now why do we end up in this condition? Let's take a look at the usual setup of performance testing. The developer writes some code on her local machine, uh, goes through the development environment, staging. And at this point, the performance tester comes in uh, start setting up the perf test environment. Now, what does that involve? Writing test scripts, setting up the load generator, the agents, etc. Start sending out the load, maybe for staging and maybe even to production. Once the tests are done, you generate report, you share it with the team, developer makes sense out of it, and then ultimately starts trying to fix them. Now, what's the problem with this setup? Right. Obviously, the first one is if you're identifying issues in staging or production, you're already quite late. And uh, what's worse is once you identify those issues, to fix those issues, you have to go through the same cycle, which means the cycle time for the issue is going to be quite high. And what makes it worse is the higher environments, including the perf test environment, are highly contested uh, because it's not just one developer, right? There are multiple developers, all of them trying to figure out how they can fix their respective issues. So that's uh, like a compounding effect with this current setup that we have with most of the teams that I've worked with. So how do we solve this and how do we want it to look? Ideally, we'd like to identify most of those issues on the left-hand side. Obviously, we cannot do away with performance testing in higher environments, but at the very least, we'd like to identify most of them on the local environment for all the obvious reasons that we already discussed. That should be easy, right? Uh, this perf tester sitting on the right-hand side all we need to do is take that same setup uh, where the performance testers had as a developer, take the setup and start running against local machine and development. And we start uh, depending uh, a little lesser on the higher environments and on the perf tester, making uh, their job a little easier. But that's not as easy as it is uh, said than uh, compared to how it's done. Let's look at the challenges with shift left. The first one is obviously creating uh, a representative of test environment on, on the left-hand side or on your local machine or lower environments. Uh, what's the difficulty? The first one is obviously the uh, production architecture itself. You have fairly complicated uh, architectures on uh, like, you know, cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, and uh, on staging, it becomes a little less uh, complex and ultimately, by the time you have your developer environment, it's just a humble laptop. Um, how do we equate all these environments and say that something that's tested here will work in a higher environment? Not necessarily possible, right? Likewise, network topologies will differ. The latency levels, the firewalls, and the architecture will be significantly different. So that's not something we can replicate on local environment to uh, a good extent. And moreover, perf test environments themselves are fairly complicated uh, with multiple servers uh, to generate significant load. Now, trying to stuff that into a higher environment itself is pretty hard. And now putting it on my local machine, this is a screenshot of how it looks as the memory pressure on my 8GB MacBook Pro. That's not desirable, is it? And now all of these issues are fairly genuine. So with all these challenges, how do we shift left? So the first, a uh, lesson that I took away from my experiences is to scale down. You can't go to C trials for every single design change. You have to figure out a way to scale down. But how do you scale down? 
let's take two parameters, request a second and response time. Now, do we scale down with aspect ratio, which is basically saying I'll reduce RPS and I'll also expect the response time, I'll sort of increase it and uh, stuff it into the lower environment. Maybe I'll maintain the RPS, but I'll reduce the response time. I don't know. These are all various options, right? So what is the way to accurately scale down uh, all these uh, parameters? And usually it's not just two uh, parameters, right? We'll have multiple. And how can we validate the performance KPIs accurately? Answer is we cannot. What we can do, however, is we scale down the trend and we invalidate hypotheses. Let's understand what hypothesis and validation is. A hypothesis uh, is practically a statement that we make that uh, you know something is going to work. And that's usually what we have to assume with a lot of software and uh, product, right? We just have to believe. We make a change and we believe that this is what is going to happen. And uh, for such a statement, there's usually uh, a verifiability aspect to it and a falsifiability aspect. So going back to the old school lesson with hypotheses, so if all green apples are sour and you eat one sweet green apple, you practically invalidated the entire uh, sour green apple theory, right? So you don't have to eat all the green uh, apples and prove that they're all sour. You just find that one uh, sweet green apple and you have disproved the entire uh, statement. Let's see how that uh, sort of connects with software and performance testing in our context. So let's say I have been given this task to achieve this particular KPI. It says with exponential increase in throughput, I want my response time to degrade only at a logarithmic scale. Right? That's the expectation. Now, how do I scale this down? While I cannot scale the absolute numbers down, the trick is to scale the trend down. Can I take the logarithmic scale and see if that is valid at lower throughput? When I test it, it doesn't happen. And I realize that uh, the response time is degrading at exponential rate. So what I do is not bother going to the higher environments, try and see if I can fix some of those issues on my local machine. Once that's fixed, and maybe even I'm able to achieve better than what is expected, uh, that's not conclusive enough for me to go to the higher environment and release this uh, piece of code or feature. It's inconclusive, so I need to validate it. And I do that in the higher environment, and I realize it actually holds good for some more time, but then, Thereafter, it seems to fall off. Uh, so for that scenario, I can always come back. But this is not all bad, right? I did identify some of the issues on the left. And then only for the absolutely uh, unconfirmable issues, I had to go to the right. And then that's your uh, shift left through invalidation. One more uh, aspect to this whole picture here is you are learning through falsifiability on the left-hand side. You're understanding better about the solution that he came up with. Obviously, we don't know whether it's going to work. And we're confirming that uh, through verifiability on the right-hand side. Let's look at one more example. This is one of my favorites for invalidating hypotheses. Let's say uh, in production, the baseline KPI at the moment is we are at 80% CPU at about 10,000 RPS. Now with cash, we'd like to reach 1 million RPS. Uh, at the same 80% CPU. Fairly ambitious, but let's see what happens. Now, how do I take this problem and scale it down? The numbers are insanely high, right? Uh, let's say I won't even fix the CPU, right? Some max CPU on my machine, and I hit XRPS without the cache. I add the cache, and uh, I figure out that at the same CPU level, I achieve another uh, RPS, which is Y. Now, it doesn't matter what X and Y are, at the least bit I expect, there is some bit of difference between X and Y. Why is this important? Because adding a cache should make some difference, right? Many a times I've seen uh, with uh, projects I've worked with, you know, where we simply add a cache and then we realize much later that it never was working. It just happened to <laughs> stay there as moral support, right? Uh, at least we'd like to identify some of these changes here, see that trend that there is a big difference between the cache being present and not being present and then move to the right. So that's how we invalidate hypotheses through uh, the trends or some significant markers. So next challenge in our uh, way 
is the capacity challenge. Like, how do you get to fit performance testing within your sprint schedule? The difficulty is uh, the developer starts writing a feature, completes it. Uh, and at that point, we know performance testing is going to take long because that's how it usually is. So what we do is hand it off to a performance sister to take this feature through its uh, uh, you know, basis. Meanwhile, the developer moves on to feature number two. Now, at this point, we hand that also over to the perf tester, move into sprint two, and we start with feature three. By this time, perf tester comes back saying, hey, I identified that feature one is not as per the expected KPIs for perf requirements. And the issues are there, but we cannot really look into it because we committed to two points velocity, and then we finish feature number four. And by then, perf tester has identified more issues. And by the time we are into sprint three, we are only fixing performance issues from sprint one and doing performance testing for sprint two. And typically, this is a very big anti-pattern, which we usually call the hardening sprint, right? So we achieved some velocity by throwing some of the pieces of work across the wall. And this never has worked in the past, right? This is typical where the testing is not complete and the feature is called done. So how do we go about solving this problem? The first thing is to come to terms with what is the reality, right? Which is if the performance tester and the developer collaborate, uh, once the feature is done, they do the performance testing together, identify the issues, and then fix them. Now that takes two sprints, and this is the best case scenario. Now, assuming we are able to fix the issues in the very first iteration that we identify them, right? Now that's how long the uh, duration of the performance test is affecting how long the feature gets to completion. So what do we do? We have to reduce the feedback cycle. We reduce effort, we reduce complexity, and we reduce repetition. And you automate all the way to resolve this problem. So reducing repetition, how do we do that? Let's start with the API tests and the post test scripts themselves. So the developer writes API tests, the perf tester writes uh, load tests or performance tests. Both of them are very common, right? Like the three uh, similar, they just generate requests. That's practically their job. A slight difference is the API tests sort of verify or assert the response. And the performance test, we don't really care about the exact result, but we measure the uh, response time. But net net, typically what would happen is probably write Karate API test here, and maybe Perf tester is using some other tool uh, which is a code gen tool and a completely different language stack. So that's repeat effort with duplication. The second evil that comes in is inconsistency. You cannot say whether the perf test is consistent with what the developer is writing as API test. And obviously there's a disconnect between the person writing the test scripts and the person who designed the system. So maybe we'll miss some aspects which we could potentially have broken in the system, right? How do you do, uh, how do you solve this problem? We repurpose, we take a perfectly good road car, chop it up, add some big engines and uh, you know, turbochargers and take it rallying. Likewise, take your API tests uh, and convert them into perf tests. That's what some of the projects that I've been working with have effectively be able to achieve. It uh, helps you reduce maintenance and you are consistent by way of how you write uh, the API tests and leverage them as perf tests. And also it's a coordinated effort and uh, promotes a lot more collaboration between the developer and the perf tester. Reducing complexity. Now this is a fairly tricky one. The ecosystem uh, around performance testing has come a long way. And you have a ton of tools that are available. Uh, once you've chosen your tool, then you have to pick up like some sort of a metric store, right? Because we don't want to see some test report at the end of the uh, run and then make sense out of it. We want to gather the application metrics and the uh, test metrics together so that we can visualize it together. On that note, to visualize, you have multiple choices, Grafana, Kibana, and the lot. Ultimately, the tooling and the infra and the instrumentation and orchestration of this whole setup, putting it together, is a fairly complicated bit. Add to this your constraints like cost and licensing, the perf testers preference, any other constraints. And ultimately with great difficulty, we might arrive at one of the stack. And uh, 
take that stack and install it on a higher environment. It's a hard enough task for the performance tester. Now, taking that and trying to shift it left and putting it onto a developer machine, which is only laptop. The developer is at a loss for how he or she is supposed to achieve this problem. Right? So uh, let's see how we can solve this. Wherever you have fragmentation and uh, complexity, the simple answer that usually pops is containerization, right? So that's exactly what I've been uh, trying to do with some of the teams. We containerize the entire performance test setup uh, so that we don't have to uh, have specialized instructions for each environment. And we write or rather develop our first test setup exactly like how we write code. And uh, we promote it, we build it on the dev machine, promote it to the higher environments. Now, taking all of the things that we've spoken so far, let's look at some code. What we did is codify all of this knowledge into a framework and we call it Puffins. Let's look at how it looks. Let us look at a live demo of Puffies. Puffies helps developers and performance testers collaborate by providing a common performance testing stack that runs on local machines and higher environments alike. It leverages Karate API tests as performance tests through Karate Gatling integration without the necessity to write any Scala code. I'll cover this in a little bit. Uh, it also gathers your application metrics and Gatling metrics so that you can see it on a live dashboard uh, in Grafana and uh, correlate what's going on with your application behavior and the load patterns. Now, all of these pieces that you've seen, uh, the orchestration is handled by Puffies and it runs inside Docker, which means you can install it on your local laptop or higher environments alike. All right, let's look at some code now. So installing Puffies is as easy as downloading the zip file and extracting it to a location of your choice. I've already done that. Now I'm going to set the environment variable Puffies home. Uh, to point to the location where I've extracted it. I've done that, and that's pretty much all the setup I'll need. Uh, at this point, I need a demo project which already has some Karate API tests, which I can convert as performance tests. So for this purpose, I'm going to uh, use the Karate demo project, uh, which sits inside the Karate GitHub. So I've already got the app uh, cloned onto my local machine. I'm going to boot up the application now and it has started. Let's verify if it's running. Localhost 8080 and uh, greeting. Hello world, the app is running. At this point, I need to start uh, integrating Puffies with this application. How do I do that? I go back to my terminal. All I need to do now is, since I already have the environment variable, I run Puffies.sh in it on this project. So you'll see that Puffies has added a configuration file, a YAML file, and another folder, which has some basic templates and configuration, which I'll cover in a bit. But primarily it has added this YAML configuration file. What I'd like to do is take the first feature, which is the greeting.feature file, uh, which is a Karate API test and convert that into a performance test. Let's look at how we can do that. So I open up my Puffies.yaml. Uh, now Puffies has dropped in a template. All right, let me walk you through this document from the top. So at the top, I have the features directory and then the Karate feature file. Like I said, I would like to leverage the greeting.feature file. So these uh, path parameters are uh, helping Puffies locate where the feature file is and create a simulation out of it. The second uh, element here is called Karate env, which says Puffies. Now, why is this required? This is because Karate config has a minor change in it, which I have done. I'll show you why. Because Perfis is going to be running inside Docker, it needs to access a Spring Boot application, which is running on our local host. So for that purpose, I've created an environment and only set the host to host.docker.internal. This, this is something you could set to any URL, wherever your application is running, and it should be running fine. All right, let's get back to the perfies.yaml again. That covers the first four lines. Now I can name my simulation to something more meaningful. I'll call it grading because we are testing grading. Now beyond that is the interesting part. Like I said, we don't have to write any Scala code to get this uh, feature file to run as a performance test. Instead, I have the load pattern defined right here. 
uh, in somewhat of a similar manner as to how you define it in Scala DSL for uh, Gatling. And uh, finally, I have some URI patterns. For this particular test, I don't need URI patterns uh, to be recognized, so I'll delete that. So there we have it. We are done. Now, the next step for us is to boot up Perfis. Why do we need to boot Perfis? Because Perfis runs inside Docker. At this point, my Docker dashboard is looking empty, but shortly, the entire stack that I showed you in the slide deck will boot up right here within uh, Docker. And done. So once it's booted up, it shows you that Grafana is running on localhost 3000. Let's actually check it out. So there, Grafana is running. The username and password is admin and admin. Inside Grafana, you'll notice that Perface has already dropped in a template dashboard. Obviously, there's no data inside this. Let's kick off a test to see how this dashboard looks. So in order to run a test, all I need to do is perfis.sh test command, and it will pick up the perfis.yaml configuration by default. Perfis now takes the creating.feature file and the load pattern we've defined here and generates a Gatling simulation, which will run for about 60 seconds, as we have mentioned here. And uh, yeah, let's look at the test results on the Grafana dashboard. So at the top, you'll notice that the left-hand side pane shows you the Gatling metrics, which is basically uh, the total number of requests and the OK and the failures. And on the right-hand side, you see the percentile response times uh, distribution. Now, obviously, you can go and modify this. The Gatling information is all available through Influx to Grafana, and uh, you can generate your own queries. So that's the Gatling-related uh, panels at the top. And at the bottom, I have uh, the uh, container metrics for the test, uh, which is being gathered through Prometheus. The purpose of this uh, dashboard is to demonstrate that you can look at the test results uh, and the application behavior side by side so that you can correlate uh, if uh, with the load pattern changes, how your application is actually behaving. So there you have it, a complete performance test that we wired up and uh, got it running in less than five minutes. So how does all this help with uh, shift left of performance testing? Let's take a look. Let's say you have your laptop and your API code sitting on it along with your Karate API test. You deploy it to your local environment. It could be dockerized. Uh, and that's pretty much your application. Now, let's say you install Puffies, which is already inside Docker. And uh, you configure through Puffy's config YAML and let Puffy's know how to generate the load, it reads it, generates the, um, you know, the performance test out of it, gathers the metrics from your local application, Gatling, presents it on a dashboard, and now you are able to analyze it and take immediate action on your local laptop. Now, once you're satisfied that your performance testing is uh, to an extent complete on your local machine, promote your application to higher environments. And likewise, you could promote Perfis to a higher environment. Being dockerized, there's not much of a specialized setup that's required in higher environments. And uh, it pretty much leverages similar configuration files through a pipeline, if you wish, and uh, runs the load test, generates load against the higher environments, gathers the metrics, makes it available to you for analysis. So this is a longer cycle. So on the left-hand side, you could do your performance testing right on your laptop, identify most of the issues there, shift left with that. And for those verification circumstances, you will have to move on the right. While we have discussed many things, the largest challenge in my opinion still remains the mindset. We need to move from the performance testing sort of a thought process towards performance engineering. What do I mean by that? Because of the word testing, uh, we seem to associate with testing to a verification activity that comes pretty much to the tail end of development. Uh, instead, it should probably be treated more like a, a learning activity, a series of spikes uh, through which we are able to learn about uh, the decisions we're making and avoid guesswork, right? All in all, what we would like to strive 
towards is uh, become more scientific about how we are making architectural decisions or even as much as adding a couple of lines of code. Uh, are we uh, involving the right amount of the rigor in uh, you know designing experiments and trying to understand what's going on? So can we uh, have some sort of a template wherein we can put all of these uh, ideas that we discussed through this talk and uh, sort of help push uh, our thought process in the right direction. So that's what I call the continuous evolution template. Uh, simply puts your problem statement, the baseline and target KPIs and their hypotheses to start with. And then comes the important pieces, which is you design experiments and particularly you split them up into falsifiability and verifiability experiments in order to uh, quickly invalidate hypotheses wherever possible and uh, record validated learnings that come out of this experiments for future reference. Let's take a simple example to run through this template. I will uh, again leverage the uh, example that we saw earlier to improve the throughput of the application. Here we have the target to take it from 10k RPS to 100k RPS. So immediate thought process that appeared to me when I was solving this problem is why don't I add a cache that should help uh, speed things along. Uh, the first falsifiability experiment I came up with for this is adding a cache should create some sort of a change, right? So you remember the, uh, you know, with or without experiment, AB experiment. So at least I need to see that difference between X and Y. So uh, that's the falsifiability piece. If this itself fails, adding a cache makes no difference. I don't need to verify it. And I try to investigate the issue and I realize the miss rate is 100% on the machine because of which I'm not able to see any discernible difference in the uh, behavior of the application. Now I further hypothesize that uh, the miss rate is 100% because the TTL is too small. So I fix the TTL issues and try the experiment again. And this time it works. So I move towards verifiability on a higher environment. And this time staging, and the strategy I'm going to leverage now is to scale the trend. Right? So we see that there is a 10x improvement that has uh, been uh, requested. So I'm going to try a 10x uh, uh, that is uh, pretty much put on the basis of uh, whatever is the baseline KPI for staging environment. Now, if we cannot achieve that, we further investigate and we realize the miss rate and eviction rate are still fairly high. The new hypothesis we have is that eviction rate is associated with the cache size. How can I prove this part on my local machine? Again, falsifiability. If I cannot prove that uh, cache size uh, improvement will help uh, remove eviction, can I prove that I can introduce eviction by reducing the cache size? That's what is the experiment here. If I can test that, I can establish there is some sort of a relationship between eviction rate and cache size. Now I repeat the verifiability experiment that works, which means the validated learning has now put me in a position where I have some meaningful recommendations for uh, how the production environment should be set up. And again, before I go too far, first I verify that deploying this change at least changes the CPU load and the current circumstances. And we have a cache hit rate just establishing that the deployment has gone through. If that works, we can go for a full-blown performance test on the prod replica to see if we can hit our target KPI, which is 80%. Uh, sorry, the target KPI of 100K RPS at 80% CPU. If that also succeeds, then we ship. Of course, I've simplified this template and for the purposes of demonstrating it here, this list was a lot longer, but you get the idea. This template has constantly put me in a position where I have to think uh, towards shifting the problem left by designing falsifiability experiments and depend less on moving to the right. Uh, with that, I thank you all for being very kind audience uh, in this uh, talk. And I hope to stay connected with everyone uh, through any of these mediums. Let's move on to the question and answers.